Hi, my name is Dave Hill and welcome to the first lesson. As you know from the title, we're going to be uh, introducing some patterns, we're going to be uh, stretching and warming up, but before we get started, I want to make sure that you understand the, the importance of what we're learning today and how it's going to impact your uh, skills as a musician the rest of your life. Uh, the, the, the content of this class is built around the organization of the fingerboard, the guitar fingerboard, and that means the organization of the scales, the arpeggios, all the chords, and key to that understanding is a good understanding of visual aids to help you remember things and that comes down to remembering shapes of roots and how those relate to chords and how those relate to arpeggios. So we're going to take little bits of information every week and slowly incorporate all that information together in a long but very methodical system that will help you remember it. Okay? It's, it's important that you build on information from, from previous lessons and attach that to new information so it forms a stronger bond. Okay, so it might seem basic at first, but it's very important to learn uh, systematically. Okay, so I can't think of, of anything that I play today on the guitar that does, doesn't somehow relate to basic stuff I learned years ago when I was first studying uh, music with my teachers. So let's begin now. Um, by, before we get into the actual patterns of any of the chords or roots or anything like that, I want to perform a basic warm-up exercise just to get our hands comfortable and stretched and our hands working together. Okay, so it's, it's important to do that when you're first playing, um, just so that you don't develop any problems with uh, hand issues. Okay, so I know that you have something on your screen that's going to help you see what I'm playing, but I'm going to show you now slowly what we're going to do, be doing at first just to warm up our left hand, and this is a stretch. Okay, so basically it's an a D chord and an A chord, okay? But they're not just typical D chords and A chords. They involve some stretching. So let me show you the fingering I'm using for my left hand D chord. It's right here in the fifth position, but notice the stretch. It's really more of an arpeggio chord, okay? But once again, listen to what I'm playing here. So D, A, E, F sharp, A, F sharp, E, A, D. When you put that together, it sounds very nice. Notice how your fingers are stretching. Okay, so that's the first chord that we're going to use to stretch our left hand. Chord arpeggio. Okay, now we're going to go to the chord below it, and then we're going to play an A chord, but now look at the voicing of my A chord, or the, the fingering arrangement. Once again, more or less an arpeggio, but designed to stretch your hand and to get your muscles warmed up. Okay, so let's go over the notes. A, E, B, C sharp, A. C sharp, B, E, A. So that's the second chord. Okay, now observe, we're going to put those together. The first chord. And the second chord. sound nice together, don't they? Now, if you do it slowly like that, and you keep your fingers poised over the frets, or in other words, positioned right over the frets they're supposed to be used on, the more that you do it, the more you'll feel your left hand kind of burn a little bit, okay? Kind of get warm and hot. 
but that's okay as long as it doesn't continue after you play. You don't have to play it fast. This is about fine. No faster than this. In fact, when you're first learning something, it's really important to do it slowly and accurately before you try to play it up to speed. If you play it too fast before you've learned the material, all you're going to do is program sloppy playing. Okay, so if it's this slow at first, that's how slow it is. The main thing is to stretch your left hand. So that's going to be the first thing we're going to use to warm up, and that's basically concentrating more or less on our left hand. Now our right hand, you might have noticed from looking at the video, uh, was not exactly alternate picking, which is the term used to describe when you play down, up, down, up, in an alternate fashion, whether it's a scale or an arpeggio, you know something like that. But what I did here on the arpeggios was more or less pick in one direction. That's called a sweep, and we'll get into that later. But now we're going to do something that's going to involve strict alternate picking in the next exercise. And that's going to be just down, up, down, up, and that's to focus on our right hand technique. Okay, so you sometimes with technique study you want to separate left and right hand issues uh, to focus on the challenges and the issues with, with your left and right hand, and then sometimes you play. You bring them together and you practice things that work on both hands. Okay, so once again on your screen you'll see some numbers. The numbers refer to your left hand fingers, okay? And they, they're, it's kind of a non-musical exercise only in the sense that it doesn't really sound like it fits diatonic key. It doesn't sound like it fits into a key. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have some good benefit, okay? I don't do a lot of these exercises, but for our first lesson today, we're going to do something that's kind of atonal, okay? But here's what it's going to sound like. If you follow the numbers, and this is finger number one, number two, number three, number four, when you play, uh, let's say you pick the top row of numbers, it says one, two, three, four. That simply means that you're going to play one, two, three, four on starting from the lowest string, and then just ascend up the strings. So it's going to sound like this with alternate picking. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Notice I went one, two, three, four, and I went up the next string, and the next string, right? And I used alternate picking on my right hand. Okay, so the t together. Now I can come back down. simply the most basic warm-up for your left, or for, rather for your right hand, okay? It, it works on your left hand as well, but I'm trying to get your right hand going now. Now, you'll see numbers after it on your screen, and those numbers represent different combinations or different orders of your left hand, just to challenge your left hand. So the next one says 2, 1, 4, 3. So that's simply...